I bought my first Rolex and I love this watch. And in fact, the one, oh, I'm not gonna show you yet. So I bought my first Rolex back in 2017. It was a personal reward. It was a gift to myself. It was something that I had set out as a goal. And once I achieved a million dollars in sales with my first business, I decided to take the plunge. And I'll be honest, gents, hitting that million dollar mark was a big deal to me. For the decade before that, I'd been trying to grow multiple businesses, had some pretty spectacular failures, including a bankruptcy. So once I hit that milestone, I celebrated by grabbing the Rolex Yachtmaster 116621. This watch made from Everos gold and steel has a charm chocolate dial. And yes, it's a bit blingy, but it's not over the top. And I have to say on my wrist, with my proportions, with my complexion, this watch, in my opinion, just looked amazing. Dare I say, perfect. Now, over the last six years, I've bought three additional Rolexes. But here's the deal, gents. Now, I got a very different opinion of the company. Why? You know why? To be straight up, gents, I have fallen out of love with Rolex. No. You're being mean. In fact, if I had to do it all over again, I'm not sure if I would actually buy this Yachtmaster. And I know this because I had a good friend the other day ask me, which Rolex should he buy first? And my answer to him, a list of watches that were not Rolexes. I take that back. One of them was a Rolex because I didn't want him to think I was ignoring his question, but I explained to him, you know, I think there were so many better deals out there. So why did I fall out of love with Rolex? First up, they're overpriced. Now, I know some of you Casio guys out there would argue that any watch over the price of about 25 bucks is overpriced. But seriously, in the last decade alone, when you look at the prices of Rolex, they have shot up. It has outpaced not only inflation, but pretty much any other metric when it comes to price gouging. And yes, I'm sure manufacturing costs have gone up somewhat, but compared to just the retail price increase, there is no way to justify how much Rolex is charging for these watches. And that's assuming you can get the watches at retail price. And that takes me to the next point, availability. So the first three Rolexes I purchased, I walked into the store, I saw them in person, I put them on my wrist, I decided to sleep on it. And in one case, that sleeping on it was waiting three months. And then when I was able to purchase, I walked in and was actually even able to get a discount because I was a repeat buyer. Now, my fourth Rolex was a steel Submariner. And this is when I started to deal with the issues of availability. This is right before COVID. I put my name on a list and within a few months, I'd received a call, them telling me that they had the watch in stock and I could purchase it, but that there were other people waiting to buy it if I didn't grab it that day. Now, I'm in sales. I get what type of tactics these are. You create this scarcity, this feeling you've got to grab it or else, and people make irrational decisions. And guess what I did? Shut up and take my money. I made that irrational decision. I didn't need another Rolex. I just grabbed it though, because I felt that if I didn't, somebody else would. And I know a lot of you guys have felt this, not just with Rolex, but with other purchasing decisions. Whenever they put that pressure on you, you buy it and then you get the buyer's remorse. And for me, this was the start of the downfall of my love affair with Rolex. Next up, let's talk about the cliche that is Rolex. Whenever people think of a luxury, fancy watch where Rolex has done a great job of branding itself as that watch. The problem here is when you get into watches and you start to collect them and you start to learn more about them, you realize how overpriced Rolexes are for what you get. And that for serious collectors, Rolex definitely are not the pinnacle of watches. In fact, the brand isn't even close to being the most sought after when it comes to collectibles. For a lot of watch guys, Rolex is too common. It is way too cliche. And that's not to downplay the company. It's got a storied history. But when it comes to interesting things going on, especially now, nowadays, not too much. And for a lot of people, they're looking for innovation. They're looking for something unique. Now, let's face it. When you look at the entire Rolex line, does it strike you as really unique, varied, and interesting? The answer for most watch collectors is going to be a big no. In fact, to non-watch collectors, when they look at the Submariner, they look at the Yachtmaster, they look at the dive watches, they look at the GMT. Well, to the non-trained eye, it looks pretty much like the same watch. And last but not least, let's talk about something that everybody overlooks maintenance costs. Now, when I bought my Rolexes, this was something I didn't even think about. I mean, an automatic watch is a closed system. How much maintenance could this thing require? Well, apparently if you wear them a lot, if you expose them to shock, and if maintaining accurate time is important, you're going to want to have these things opened up and maintenance will need to be performed. Guess what? Not only is it not cheap, but you're going to have the additional stress of your expensive watch getting shipped via FedEx. So all of this begs the question, why do smart people spend thousands of dollars on overpriced watches to begin with? I mean, what's the point? What's going on here? Well, the first reason is a deeply held 
human belief that's been around for thousands of years. In fact, we've even seen this in apes whenever they will copy each other. But basically, we believe that certain items can elevate our social standing. The example I'm talking about was when a group of chimpanzees, it was observed that one of the leaders had a feather that they would wear right behind their ear. Well, others picked up on this and because this one was a leader in the tribe, it became fashionable. It became a sign of status to wear a feather behind the ear. And in many ways, human beings aren't too different. We believe that certain items that we wear can command respect. We believe that the right items worn in the right way can actually cause people to admire us. To see this in practice throughout history, all you have to do is look at portraits from 50 years ago, 150 years ago, 350 years ago. What do we see? Strong, powerful men and women, healthy individuals at the peak of their power, adorned with feathers, adorned with small accessories that send the signal they are someone not to be trifled with. At an early point in the company's life, the founders of Rolex understood this. They have continuously positioned themselves as a luxury icon. They purposely associate themselves with exclusivity with the elite. By doing this, they've been able to create an image that the watch is associated with those that are successful. It is a non-verbal cue to those in the know that this person has the means to actually purchase the watch and the knowledge that this is a status symbol that speaks for the person before they even open their mouth. And I fully admit, I fell into that marketing. As a kid growing up in a trailer park in West Texas, I still knew the power of the Rolex watch. The legend was, no matter where you're at in the world, if you've got a Rolex watch, you've got a ticket home. What that implies is that the brand is so strong that you can even use the watch as currency. In fact, depending on who you talk to, a lot of people would argue that it's even better than currency when it comes to increasing its value versus, yeah, if you kept $100 bills, they would have lost value due to inflation. In any case, like currency, like money, Rolex has established itself as a tangible item that is a representation of success. And speaking of money, let's talk about the next reason a lot of smart people were buying Rolexes and continue to is that they actually view it as an investment. And gentlemen, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not giving financial advice, but I know a lot of people have purchased their Rolex watches with the belief that this is going to be something that maintains its value over time. Well, as many Rolex investors in the last year can tell you, things do not always go up. I know a lot of guys actually got caught whenever the tide came back and they weren't wearing bathing suits. And in that show, recently, a lot of people lost a lot of money on watches because they didn't know what they were doing. It's funny how speculative investments actually work. But seriously, gents, there are people that understand watches that were able to make a lot of money. On the other hand, a lot of people got in just because they were greedy and they got caught with their pants down. For me, all the Rolexes I bought were at retail and I did resell that Submariner because I realized I was never wearing it and I had a buyer that was waiting and I didn't have to deal with any transaction fees and I made probably about 20% profit on it. But in my experience, when it comes to high risk investments, and we're talking watches, we're talking art, we're talking maybe even fragrances, because yes, there is a resale market for men's fragrances. But in all these instances, you need to know what you're doing or you're just gambling. Because what a lot of people fail to understand whenever they're reselling a watch is how much of a fee those trusted brokers actually take. And they serve a good purpose because they take the watch, they inspect it, they even sometimes provide protection to the buyer and sellers. But for that, they take a pretty hefty fee. And sometimes that fee can totally wipe out all of the gains. So instead of making three grand on that watch, you only made 300. I know for me personally, I view my watches as kind of like a piece of property. I could sell them. The money is tied up and it would take a little bit of work to get that money out. But the reality is I like them. I've got sentimental value in them. I probably give them to my kids. And for that reason, I view them as having value, but not as true investments that I hold no emotional attachment to and could, you know, offload easily. Now, this next reason why a lot of smart people spend big money on watches, I can actually see where it's justified, especially if you appreciate art. For anyone that's been emotionally affected by something that is beautiful, whether it's a dance or perhaps a sculpture or a drawing, you understand the power of beauty and how it can seem to transform your soul. Now, when I bought my first Rolex and I put it on my wrist, one thing that I thought was really interesting is how the watch made me feel when I wore it. I mean, the reality is most people did not even notice it. In fact, it was only other watch guys and usually in a situation in which we are close and we've been talking for a while. But it took me a while to understand why was this watch having an effect on my own mindset, my own emotional state. And it came down to what this watch represented to me emotionally and how I just felt the watch whenever I found it in that shop was made for me. Again, the proportions, the color, everything just seemed to work with my wrist and with the outfits that I was putting together. Well, it turns out a big part of that is the skill and the construction and the build quality that goes into a working piece of art. 
Now, gents, I'm not saying this watch is a one of a kind. No, it's more like a print copy. But if you think about it, it doesn't matter if it has the effect on you. I mean, you can go to an art gallery and you think you're seeing the original. Some of those higher end pieces, they actually have copies out there. The original is tucked away because they don't want it to be stolen. My point is, if you appreciate craftsmanship, skilled engineering, precision construction, high quality materials, the idea here is that I own something that was made with great care, something that is of high quality that's going to be around for years. And when you think about this, Design. That's one thing I like about automatic watches is they've really reached the apex of design and they are making improvements on movement. But really, this is something that in a hundred years, this watch, if my great great grandson or granddaughter had this watch, it would still function. So, after saying all of this, why am I saying that most people probably shouldn't buy a Rolex? So, first up, let's talk value. If Rolex watches were a few thousand dollars, if they had an entry point watch at that price point, no brand. And they used to, the Oyster Perpetual, which in my opinion is one of the most underrated Rolex watches out there. This is the original Rolex, the design, the one where they all came from. And I love this watch because it is simple, timeless, classic, elegant, absolutely beautiful. And yes, I know if you look around, you can find some used and some vintage watches, definitely in that price point. But in my opinion, Rolex has made a big mistake by raising the price so much on this entry level watch that for so many people, this is just a great first watch to start with, but now is at, you know out of their price range. Because the reality is for $1,500, for $3,000, for even $4,000, you've got tons of options when it comes to great quality watches that have just as much heritage, you know, as Rolex, but they haven't spent that much money on marketing. That being said, if you were to twist my arm and you're saying, Antonio, I'm going to get a Rolex, which one do you think is the best value? Which one is the best deal? Well, I will say it is not the Submariner. The Submariner is a great watch. I had a Submariner. It's an iconic looking watch when it comes to most people's vision of what a Rolex watch looks like. This is the go-to look, but here's the deal. This watch is the cliche. Rolex watch. It's probably the most popular Rolex watch out there for people that want to get their first Rolex. They want a statement piece. They want something that clearly says this is a Rolex. So, what about the Oyster Perpetual? Like I said, this one right here, the classic Rolex watch. I know a lot of people want something a little bit bigger, a little bit flashier, and they do have various versions of the Oyster Perpetual with different colored dials. It's the classic design, but for some people, a little bit too boring. But again, doesn't have to be. You can find used or vintage versions that actually have a little bit more color. Even even have some jewels on them, but that is going to drive up the price and in my opinion, make it less versatile. No, the perfect Rolex watch, especially for someone that just wants to grab one watch that can do everything. It's functional, beautiful, legible, can dress it up, can dress it down. Guys, I'm going to have to go with the Rolex Explorer. Now, there's a few variations of it. I have one in just steel and black, which is the classic design. I know on the wrist of larger guys, it can appear a bit small. So, I know if you've got a larger wrist, this may not be the best fit. But yeah, when my friend asked me for that list of what Rolex watch would I recommend, I pointed out you'll be tempted by the Submariner. If you can find a date just that is plain, is simple, grab it. But if you can't look for the Explorer, they don't always have them in stock, but that one right there is absolutely beautiful and a classic watch and in my opinion, the best deal over at Rolex. Now, what about non-Rolex watches? Well, guys, I cover that in this video right here. Actually, I got two for you. I talk about two watches that I highly recommend and actually Rolex has a shared history with one of these watch brands right here. So, click on either one if you want to learn about Tudor or you want to learn about Grand Seiko. Both these videos, I think you'll enjoy. Guys, check them out. Boom, right here.